Hey, 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 welcome back to Big Board. All right, thanks for joining us. What we're going to do at, for a few minutes here is have a little chat about the devil's uh, to pay and try and walk you through a couple of different uh, mechanics and actions that occur in the game. The system is a little bit different from the rest of the, I think it's called the Blind Swords series. I'm sorry, Herman, for not remembering the name of the, the series, but this is a simplified version of that. And I'd only played it once before and really was guided through it uh, by a friend online. Uh, and uh, and we, we didn't, I didn't grok the game. I played it and enjoyed it. Thought it was fun, all the rest of it. So this is really my first experience digging into, in fact, digging into tactical combat uh, in, in the American Civil War. So I have no context with which to say, oh, this is just like system A or B, nor do I really have any context to say that it is appropriate and accurate for the American Civil War at this at this juncture in the in the in the back in the war, right? Uh, obviously, it's part of the the Gettysburg Battle, which ranged over a couple of days and across a very large uh, area of terrain. But this is just a, a very small piece of that. And I've had the good fortune to visit the battlefield uh, three times, in fact, um, which is interesting in of itself that I haven't played any tactical games, but I've been to several battlefields uh, more than once. But that doesn't explain the game to you. So I'm telling you those things kind of as a caveat emptor. Uh, first of all, you know, I'm on turn three and we're literally oh, one, two, three, the fourth activation in turn three. So playing by myself, I'm very raw here and I may mislead you with some of my rules uh, interpretations so don't take it all as gospel right but I but I was intrigued enough by what what has happened so far in this activation and this is only part of the activation uh, to want to share with you what I'm seeing and and how it's it's kind of meshing for me and how I'm understanding it and to put that in just a, a, a slight bit of context for you it's a small format game, right? As you can tell, that uh, it's a, oh, well, you can't really tell I'm zoomed in, but uh, if we pull back here, there's the map. It's a small map. I know it's blurred, but you get the idea. I want to, I want to keep focused in on these units. And as such, it comes with a, a rule book that is, you know, the a diminutive size. And I, of course, like my stuff full scap, so I printed it out. Uh, in a PDF that, that you know Herman was kind enough to send that to me, but I, I found myself flipping a lot through the rule book looking for things in this you know big full scat page printed version. And I think that's my fault. <laughs> um, I, I'm making it harder on myself. Although I will say that the combat results are listed in the rule book, and as far as I can tell, I'm now quickly scanning the charts I have up on the wall here that they are not anywhere else on the charts, although I've only got one side of them facing, and I'll show you here. Uh, there's a Union player aid card, Confederate player aid card, which I put side by side. Uh, the combat results table, and uh, order of battle, which has been very useful for me because I have no idea who all these division and corps commanders are and whatnot, the terrain chart, and then that's the scenarios for reinforcements and things like that. So. Uh, so I'm just I'm just trying to put this in context a little bit for you because this may all come across the wrong way and I hope it doesn't. Uh, I'm enjoying myself. So you pull a chip from the cup and you activate a formation and that formation has a quality rating that might be poor or average or good or whatever the case may be and there's one uh, uh, result on either end of that. And you roll a d6 and that determines the quality of the response to the activation and it might be no orders it might be slow it might be timely it might be efficient etc and 
the the ratings actually are different for each side. If I went back to the the Confederate play aid and the Union play aid, in fact, let's do, let me see if I can just grab the original ones here. I'll put them side by side. Uh, I grabbed the two play aids and I looked at those. Now they minor, well, they're minor, actually fairly significant differences, right? You can see that better commanders have a better time on the tables than the, than the good union commanders do. And so that in of itself is going to drive the actions and behavior of each side as you're pulling these chits out. And the results of those slow, timely, efficient, etc., allow you to, you know, either activate one brigade, or fire an artillery brigade, or activate a division, or activate more than a division. I think it is activate all the units of division under one order, or and then it goes or or or. So there's multiple things that you can do. And let me make sure that they're both identical. Yeah. So the the results are also identical. Okay. So uh, and then depending on what orders you then choose to give your formation, uh, this is where it starts to get interesting, is you, you, you will either have <clears throat> five movement points or the bare minimum, which is uh, one hex or two on a road, or maneuvering. There are sort of three order types. And those order types are then going to drive your ability to do things, engage, do, closest, do assault combat, rally, fire, things like that, right? So already, before you've even moved a unit, you're perhaps thinking down, so you're telescoping in or microscoping in perhaps, <laughs> uh, digging into where that commander is at, what does he want to do, how does he want to do it, and what are the restrictions that he has around that? Obviously, you know, with a move order, you can't just move straight up and adjacent to an enemy unit. You have to be X hexes away. Uh, if you're in, a, in attack mode, well, then you have less movement points, but you can move adjacent to the enemy. So these guys here, Pettigrew, uh, was uh, activated under Heth's uh, divisional orders. We rolled a six for him. And there are these event chits in the game as well. And the Union played something, I forget what it is now. I think it was Confusion or something like that. I can't find where the chit is. Now, well, Vague Orders, I think it was. And uh, that moved the result to the left one, which is bad. But nevertheless, with the six die roll, we got to still conduct the activation that we would have conducted. And the first thing we did with Pettigrew, and hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly, because not only do I not pronounce French words or German words or Swiss words correctly or the English words correctly, I don't pronounce Southern American names correctly either. But nevertheless, this chap here, he, uh, he activated and he was, I guess, here. And the first thing we do once we've done uh, that uh, activation is we get to fire. And so they shot and they shot at... Cutler's brigade here that was sitting, I think, here actually. And I'm out of focus because I'm looking at the map and not at, you, and not at what you're seeing. So how's that? Uh, so we shot at him here. <clears throat> he retreated one to here. And lucky shot, but nevertheless, uh, we, we were successful. So now we get to move and we get to, we, we're allowed to move adjacent. And so these units all moved up uh, I forget exactly where they were, but nevertheless, uh, I think this guy was here, right? And so we close assaulted or we assaulted this hex and we were successful and we, we uh, made this unit uh, be reduced and uh, shaken again. Uh, the, there's only one shaken, so it doesn't matter, but shaken again and he skedaddled one. Uh, so he, he skedaddled one the first time and then a second time to here. And then these guys get to advance into here. And I'll explain how the assault works and the, the firing and stuff and all that sort of fun stuff in, in, in a second. But the, what was neat about all that was that because I got to advance, I had the opportunity to conduct a follow-on attack. And so rather than attacking this unit at a somewhat disadvantageous set of metrics, 
I attack this guy because I would have a two to one result because he's a five down to uh, a four for the shaken. And I would also get the benefit of the morale difference. He would be a two and I'm a three. And so that would get me two shifts on the column on the CRT starting at the eight, which is good because that means it's the eight, nine column, goes up to the 10 plus column, then goes into one of the starred columns. And I rolled a 51, which is a good roll. Uh, it's a 2d6 roll. So you, you, you uh, use this as a, uh, a ugh, units and tens. And uh, so I roll 51. These goals roll 50, guys roll 54. And then we take that result, the two results that are on the table. So it was an S and a uh, R, I think it was. And we look at the defender column and the attacker's result and we cross-reference that and we see that we got another uh, bad result for Cutler and he's actually gonna be eliminated because his first result, he flipped and retreated and now he has to flip again, so he's gone. So that was uh, pretty awesome. That's the first thing I've killed in this game. And uh, and you may be saying, well, hang on a second, why, why didn't uh, Cutler and his boys get to fire at uh, Pettigrew, what, Pettigrew while he was advancing. Well, they did. Uh, they, we did that as well because when this guy was here, he retreated to here with a shaken marker and he was on this side. I advanced these two guys up. And in fact, you do it one at a time. So I advanced this chappy up first and then he, uh, hopefully you can see, he uh, took fire from him because he, he was adjacent. And then uh, as a shaken unit, and then this guy advanced up and he fired and he, f oh, no, 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 he, he fired. Oh, I know what I did. Ha, ah, sorry, correction. I'm just telling you what happened. Doesn't really matter, but the cadence, the, the, the sequencing is important. I moved this person up first. Both of these units fired at this unit and he survived that attack. And that meant that now these guys could not do any other engagement fire against any other units that moved adjacent. So this chappie moved in here and he's like, ha ha, I have you. And he uh, says, I shall assault you. And so he assaulted, reduced him and flipped him over and he retreated, advanced and attacked again, killed that guy. So one dead uni union uh, uh, unit. So the, the thing that is fascinating to me here is that the there's there's not a lot of protection first of all but uh no the thing that's fascinating is that it does evoke a pretty strong narrative as i'm writing down the different uh, metrics here in the die rolls you're seeing uh the the advance uh, you know up the road across the bridge into the adjacent, adjacent hex. They're on the same terrain here. So they're at the same level, so they fight each other. These guys are in a, a farmhouse or an orchard. No real great protection there for them. These fellas came around and uh, across the dry stream and over here up, up the little slope and they attacked, they stormed in, ba fixed bayonets and in they went. Uh, you can imagine the smoke billowing from the, the shots being fired. These guys are keeping these guys busy and uh, it all felt uh, kind of right. Now, it felt right from, from the perspective that I've never played a tactical uh, American Civil War game before, nor have I, uh, let's see, nor have I, uh, do I have a reference set because I don't have a lot of historical reading in this era. I've read at the operational level a little, but not at down at the tactical level. So, so that, so that's uh, it, but it seems to be flowing well. And I could certainly see this being somewhat applicable to the Napoleonic era as well. Uh, I'd be curious to see how that would work. Here's the, the interesting thing about the, the engagement, excuse me, the engagement firing. Let me get some water. Uh, the engagement firing and also the firing that happened originally, uh, the very first shot that uh, shot, uh, that sh shook this guy. You roll three dice, right? And you get, uh, well, that's going to be a horrible roll because it'll be a 12 and a 6. Uh, but if I rolled a uh, 52, 
with a strength of 10 shooting at something, a 52 would give me an S result on the fire combat table. And I would then look at the six that I rolled, add it to the red three here. You can see that okay there. Let me zoom in a little bit for you. And I would get a result of nine. And there might be some mitigating factors, uh, other DRMs that might impact this number, but I get nine. And high numbers are bad. So we go down the cohesion test score down to nine and go across to the S result. And I would see that uh, I am shaken and I take an SK1, which is a skedaddle one, but it's in brackets and I don't know what the brackets mean. So that kind of spoils that little explanation for you. Maybe that's, uh, I can take a look. I have no idea, I'd have to look that up. And I can't find it real quickly, where is it? I don't see anything, that's, oh here we go, FF. No, no that's for firefights. All right, just trust me that that's the result, okay? Nevertheless, a high high die rolls here are good. You want to roll. At, you want your enemy to roll low on the reds, so that you get a low result. Because a two would have just. Uh, oh, I'm wrong. Hang on a second. Oh no, that's right. Oh no, I'm wrong. I'm an I'm an idiot. Look, so here's something that's incongruous. So, a lo, a low die roll on the cohesion test score is better. That's right. So this is a bad number, six and three, nine is gonna give me a shaken and a retreat. Let's call, let's, let's just say that's what it is. I don't know, I just don't know what the brackets mean at the moment, but a low number, if I had a roll of one and a three would have been a four, that would have been a DP, so we would have depleted, and that's a small error in the rules. Uh, there are, D results and DP results. Oh, D, uh, D results are for uh, attack for the uh, assault, but a DP result will deplete, and that would flip you flip you over, and then you would have to retreat too. So low results are bad on on the red dice, and you want high results on the because you want to get sixty six or whatever the case may be on this. So I know that little that got a little lost there. Uh, my apologies, but. Uh, I was just looking at these results here and, and noting that the assault combat results matrix and the fire combat cohesion test table have uh, different acronyms uh, and different uh, uh, summations on them. So I need to reread that section of the rules. Anyway, feels pretty good. The artwork is nice. I'm not a huge fan of the, the bold yellow font. Uh, stuff on the map here. Uh, I don't like that, but I do like the rest of the artwork. It, it is a kind of, <clears throat> you know, late 80s style. Uh, I forget the name of the artist. Everybody knows him. He's the guy that does all the Napoleonic uh, maps and all the ACW maps, uh, generally speaking. I'm sure you'll know who he is. And uh, I, here's a game that for me, if this was in with a full uh, rule book that was full scat, uh, regular page sized <clears throat> make this a larger hex map make it a full size map with larger hexes and you know improve the counter quality these are uh, tiny battles publishing counters so you get what you get with these guys they uh, are fair to middling in terms of their quality and uh, you can these these particular counters are actually great but uh, they are uh, sometimes not the best. And as you can tell, uh, they're, they're not the sort of quality that I would like to see, generally speaking. But it plays well, it's interesting, and it's a great intro, I feel, to this system, so that if you want to get into this system and buy other titles in the series, this is the game to buy for you. And if you want to uh, maybe get into... Uh, like I am, uh, uh, American Civil War tactical combat, this has also got some interesting attributes to it that would uh, be very flavorful and give you a feel for how it all works. So I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm leaning towards saying that this is excellent after uh, 
at 2.2 turns and uh, we'll certainly be uh, reporting back to you once I finish this scenario and we see how it all plays out. Uh, there's a lot of things to like here. It's a, uh, it's a, it's not intricate. It's, it's uh, there. There are a lot of steps or phases to go through in an activation, and you need to think carefully about what you want to do and how you want to do it, without it being a grind. Uh, I, there's not, it, you know, you're moving, you're shooting, you're moving, and you're fighting. So it's pretty straightforward. But there are specifics to each uh, each element, and depending on the type of uh, combat you're going to do, you need to pay attention and you need to use the right uh, the right tables. As uh, I was just looking at earlier on and getting a little confused. All right, that's all I wanted to share. Somehow that became a 20 minute video. My apologies, but here it is. And uh, I will talk to you and on. Ciao.